Very good. Yeah, welcome everybody. This is uh, the Chamber Edge meeting um, within the Greater Lowell Chamber. Uh, we have a monthly uh, first, uh, second Tuesday of every month session um, of a topic of, uh, of interest to small business owners where we get together like this and either have a discussion later or in our case today, uh, have a panel discussion around a topic that we um, that we either think or have been told, hopefully both by our our uh, members of uh, uh, small business owners and our members of the chamber that it would be a topic to the, of interest to them. And obviously, we hit the jackpot this morning because we've got a fairly good sized group here, which is great because the whole purpose of this meeting is to uh, convey useful information and to trade uh, information amongst each other and uh, eat and learn from one another. So having said that, uh, let me turn it over to Danielle to introduce our panelists. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm so happy you're all here today. I'm Danielle McFadden. I'm the president of the Great Old Chamber of Commerce and never want to shy away from video if you follow us on social media. Um, we have a great panel here, but we also, I see so many faces here of people who use social media regularly or use video regularly. So we want this to be an open discussion. So I'm gonna be asking our panelists questions, um, but if you have any information and insight and wanna chime in, please feel free to either raise your hand or um, utilize the chat. And it would also be great if you put your name and contact information in the chat so that everybody here can save the chat and um, connect with each other offline which is what it's all about. Um, so we're so excited. Uh, the panel that we have today are all people that we utilize regularly through the chamber and are very active members. We have Kristen Flynn from KFP Media, Rachel Palazzotti and Amanda Claremont from Rise Social Relations Firm, and Hans Riemer from Market Vantage. So I'm going to call out them individually, have them introduce themselves, tell a little bit about um, what they do, and then the, their answer to why video. Uh, so I'm going to start with Kristen, please. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, good to see you all. Um, my business is KFP Media. I have been working for myself for over 20 years and in the, in the industry for close to 30. Um, being a video producer from day one with all sorts of clients from big business to nonprofit to small business, um, educational institutions, it's kind of like you name it. So it's been a really fun career, a lot of variety. Um, I say why video? Because video humanizes a brand, a company, a, um, a institution. You know, you can, I, I, I like to evoke emotion in my videos. And I think emotion really um, will, will get that call to action that you're looking for. So that's my short answer. Thank you, Kristen. You will we'll say you're the pioneer on the panel because you've been doing video for so long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to kick it over. When to I started Rachel. when I started, it was uh, analog. I did all the thing on window, you know, window dubs and VHS. I mean, it was the industry has changed so much. So, <laughs> well, hopefully, it makes it a little bit easier on your end. Yeah. At least, uh, <laughs> I'm going to kick it over to Rachel and Amanda. Good morning. Um, my name is Rachel Palazzotti. Um, Amanda and I own Rye Social Relations Firm. We started it in March of 2021 um, and we've had a great start thanks to all the support from the chamber. And um, the importance of video, in my opinion, is because we are in an overstimulated culture where everyone is fighting for your attention. And so if you can get your information, especially when you're trying to market your business, if you can get that information into a video format and in front of your viewers, uh, you're winning, you know, because everyone is fighting for, you know, the top of the algorithms and to get eyes on whatever their products are. So if you can capture it in a nice little package and uh, attract attention to it through video, it's the best way to do it. 
And good morning, everyone. Amanda Claremont. I am um, Rachel's counterpart over at Rise Social Relations Firm. Uh, she's my partner that we like to say all the time. Um, one thing that I will add in regard to, so we work with small businesses to help escalate them on social media. And one thing that I will add about video that I think is so important that we communicate to our clients all the time is that it's a fantastic way to really show personality um, Danielle oozes personality in all of her um, videos that she puts out for the chamber on Instagram and Facebook and even over on LinkedIn. So I think it's a really great way to let people know who you are and what you're about without just text and pictures. Um, it's a really good insight into who you are, what your brand stands for, and what working with, with you would look like. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. actually, um, we've had several new members that have joined because of seeing my videos on LinkedIn, which is surprising, but not a lot of people are utilizing video over there. So I found that to be really useful. Um, but while we're all in the chat, if you could put either why your answer for why video or why you're here, what you're hoping to learn, that would be great. And Hans. So yeah, so I, um, I run a digital marketing agency. I started in 2003. And so we're, we're all about helping people generate leads and get traffic to their websites. And, you know, we've been working with insert, I've been personally working in search, uh, like Google search and, and, and that kind of thing for over 20 years. Um, content is really important. Obviously, you know, you, we all heard the saying content is king. Content increases engagement with people. Um, engagement definitely drives search as well as other traffic. And it builds authority and it builds trust and it builds your brand. And it gives you, um, I think it, you can provide a public service by you have specialized knowledge that you can share. So that's all part of, I think, the, the big picture. So you're doing something good for others and it's obviously going to work well for you as well. So I think it's it just part should be part of, a, a big part really these days of your content strategy. And it's gotten a lot easier since the days that poor Kristen had to, uh, you know, cut VHS tapes with um, with a razor blade or whatever it was you used. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not that old, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> you just dug yourself in a hole. Huh? Yeah, I yeah. did. I did. I did. I did. Um, so we have some great questions, and I think most of them will be apl applicable to the whole panel. But if you are a panelist and it's just not kind of within your wheelhouse, just say I'm going to pass on this. Um, so my first question is, and I'm going to have Hans um, answer first, is how long do you think is best in terms of a video for really any, any for viewability? Because we are a culture where uh, we're constantly scrolling and clicking and doing multitasking. Yeah, I think, um, I, I think it's important uh, to be focused on length. Um, you can go on and on. It's easy to produce long video. Um, we... My company, um, uh, one, of my, one of my managing partners and I have started producing a video that we try to do weekly called Digital Marketing Mondays. And we try to keep them to under 10 minutes. I think people tend to snack more on videos. It's not like a big five course meal. Um, so you know, we, we try to compartmentalize it, keep it to a very short topic and just get it, get it out there and get it done. Not a lot of, um, you know, you know, you don't need a lot of buildup about it. Just just give people what they want to see because um, you can spend a lot of time. If you're a video consumer or watcher, you know that you can get sucked into a lot of losing a lot of time doing that sort of thing. I know I do. I, I you know, I've gotten on YouTube and two hours later, I figured out, oh, well, you know, I really need to get some work done today. So, um, yeah, I, I say keep it. I say keep it short if you can. There is a there is obviously a place for longer format video. But um, if it's just something you're producing that's not got high professional standards, you know, get your message out there and, and break it up into, into bite-sized chunks. That's, that would be my advice. Kristen. Yeah, I mean, I always, I, I, I tell my clients, you know, when they're worried about four minutes or six minutes or eight minutes, I said, you know what, at some point, if you're doing a, um, a, a kind of a documentary style storytelling video, it, it's as long as it needs to be to tell the story. And if the story, and if it's moving and if it's engaging and if it's um, interesting and educational and, and of value, then no one's gonna care whether it's four minutes or six minutes or eight minutes, you know? But I totally agree that, that the, um, the, the small bite-sized chunks certainly 
especially on social media, make such a difference. And um, it, that, a lot of my clients are doing it that way. We're, instead of creating one long video, we're creating many, many, many short videos. That's a perfect segue to social media and Rachel and Amanda, but I do love the concept of kind of keeping your content, content snackable. So, you know, releasing little pieces um, to whet people's appetite and have them wanting more. So, and then Rachel you can put Amanda. a longer video on YouTube or, or your website, you know what I mean? So, yeah. In for events, right? I mean, you're, you're I think one of your specialties really um, is creating these amazing videos that touch people at events and, and compel people to donate to nonprofits right. is right. a huge right. strength of yours. Yeah, so when it comes to social media, it's actually like you want to, the shorter, the better. Um, kind of going off of what Hans and Kristen is saying, but when I say shorter, I mean like short, like 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds max, um, depending on what, what kind of platform you're using and depending on what kind of um, video you're putting out. So everyone has probably heard of Reels at this point. Um, it actually caps you off on a specific amount of time that you can capture your video, but there are video components of Instagram that you can share and Facebook and live videos that you can do on social media. We always tell our clients to try to hang around under three minutes um, because statistically it shows that people's attention span really can only consume just that. And really it's probably the first 60 seconds. If it doesn't capture them, they're going to swipe right by and they're going to go on to the next thing. Um, so it's really trying to get a powerful punch of your mission and your vision and your, your message across to them in the first 30 seconds if possible. But, you know, I would say definitely under three minutes uh, for sure. Rach, do you have anything you want to share to that? Yeah, I was going to say three minutes max when it comes to social media. Other platforms definitely have a longer span of time. Um, YouTube, people are usually committed. They've deliberately researched what they're out to look for, but it's more educational. Whereas social media, you want to kind of um, hook people quickly, but then take, don't take up too much of their time, no more than three minutes. Um, but really the stories on social media are 15 seconds because that's how short we have pulled everyone's attention span down to, which is so sad now. Um, but that is why there are different features on social media for this exact purpose between IGTVs and going live. Um, there is no max on how long you can go live, I don't believe. Um, so within reason. Um, so I would say the shorter, the better, but for the most part, about 90 seconds to three minutes max. And that's actually a great segue. So we, I'm looking in the chat and we have so many people that are really active on social media with video. We have Henry Marte from Marte Media. We have Andre Mills. We have Peter. Um, so Peter has a great question and feel free to share the links to your social media too. Like um, Henry, I know you've had some amazing drone videos that have had thousands, tens of thousands of hits. Um, Peter's question is, what are your thoughts on live video on platforms and doing episodic shows? So I'm gonna, while, while you're um, still on my screen, Rachel, have you um, answer the question. So what are your thoughts on live video on platforms and doing episodic shows? Yeah, so we definitely, um, a lot of the work that we do with our clients, we break it up into episodes um, on social media, just so that if people find that they come across that video, and then they want more of that specific topic, or maybe it's all podcasts, or it's divided up in a very strategic way. They they are in the zone to go just st strategically down that hole. Um, so we definitely divide up into segments like that. Um, live IGTVs, I don't really feel like it matters how you organize it, um, but it's definitely worth it to use it like that. Um, Kristen, Hans, Amanda, you have anything you want to add? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, I've, I've started doing some live event, live stream events, you know, with pre-recorded video uh, pieces. I mean, obviously with COVID, that's kind of how events are happening online. So there's so many different platforms um, that you can use to do that. I mean, that's kind of a whole nother animal in itself, but it certainly is a valuable one. Um, you're on mute, Hans. That's my first time saying that in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad I gave you the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, yeah, we haven't done much with live. It, it doesn't apply as much. We're not so much uh, an event type uh, company, um, but um, our, our digital marketing Monday is very, it's episodic. It's basically, it's breaking news is what we're, what we're doing with that. We're putting it out sort of a compilation on a Monday. Typically it's one topic. And like I said, now we're struggling to keep it short. I just want to ex uh, point that out from personal experience. You know, we're, we're trying to keep it. We, we originally shot for five minutes. Right now we're trying to push it under 10. I think we just recorded one that was about seven. Big victory there, uh, but it's hard. And you can do some of this stuff in post. You can go and edit it, edit things down. Um, so that's that's helpful as well. You don't, you know, if you if you ramble, tend to ramble a bit, which I tend to do, um, it, it's very helpful to be able to go in afterwards and chop it up a bit. Um, but um, yeah, that, that's... Um, that's kind of our approach is to say, okay, let's, let's do live news. We want to start a second channel with, you know, tips, you know, evergreen, timeless types of uh, advice that people can use and apply in their own businesses. So we're, we're looking to start a second channel right now. Um, but, but, uh, and those are also probably going to be very, very short because I think like, like you got, everybody's been saying people's attention spans are really short. And if you start rambling on, you're going to lose people and they're, they're going to click the something else. Amanda, do you have anything you'd like to? Um, I'm just one thing I'll add that kind of goes away from just the creation of the video is making sure that if you are going to do like episodes, for example, or if you know you're going to go live on a specific event um, or on a specific topic, one of the things that we like to do for our clients is kind of like foreshadow that so that your audience knows that it's coming and they can tune in for it. And then you'll have better views on usually that content um, and they'll kind of flag it in their minds that they wanna come back, like you said, Hans, on a Monday and get that like quick mm -hmm. tip news feature that you have. So I think the, the better you can do in foreshadowing that and letting people know what your schedule might look like for your live videos, if you have the capability and it, kind of have it scheduled out ahead of time. And then the same thing with the episodic um, videos as well. Thank you. And then Andre just said in the chat that if your script is 350 to 400 words, that it usually makes a three minute video. So that's a great tip. And we all know how to use our word count from, you know, the days of having to, you know, write papers or grants. Um, so my next question is, and I'm, I'm imagining this is going to vary from um, panelist to panelist, but cost. So cost for um, implementing video into your strategy. And I'm going to start with Amanda because she's on my screen right now. <laughs> yeah, so cost to us is gonna look very different than cost for Kristen. Um, so we go out and we shoot for our own clients and we do everything from our iPhones um, and we edit in-house and all of that. So when it comes to work, us working with a client specifically, we have different tiers of packaging that we offer, um, but there isn't a specific added cost for video. Um, so I don't want to go down like the rabbit hole too, too much. I know it's going to look very different the way that Hans and Kristen um, probably explain it. But uh, what we do for our clients includes the video creation um, on our end. And the video creation in many cases is reels. And then some reels, um, we also help them with their IGTVs. Um, we they'll record live sometimes and send them to us and we'll break them up into little bits and pieces and use them in different, um, like for example, if they do send us a video that's six or seven minutes long, we'll likely cut that down and use little tidbits of it throughout a month or the next three months or the next quarter, um, things like that. All right, now I'm gonna kick it over to Hans. Yeah, so I mean, we don't really, we don't really produce video for our clients. Um, so if I, if I had a client that needed that kind of thing, I would turn to Kristen or I, you know, depending on what their needs are, I would turn to Kristen or I would turn to Amanda and, and, and Rachel and, and bring them in on it. Um, we're doing our own internal video. Um, I've got a list. I can actually put this up in this. You know what? I might put it, paste it into the chat. It's probably the best way to do it uh, with the tools that we use. Um, our video is kind of an interview format. So it's myself and this guy, Devin, uh, who's like my rocket scientist guy who knows everything technical. And so we do an interview. He either, either interviews me or I interview him. And we use a tool called Ecamm Live, uh, which is um, really designed for that. It gives you a lot of extra tools and flexibility. It's 16 bucks a month. If you uh, can't afford that, you know, I would use Zoom. You put two people on Zoom and you just record that, that image. You can actually record it right from within Zoom. Um, so that's, that's a way you can do that. Um, 
Then it gets edited in Adobe Premiere, uh, which I guess is 21 bucks a month if you get the subscription version. Uh, I've never used Premiere myself. Um, like again, it's not my, my area of specialization, but I have used the Windows Video Editor, which is free. Uh, iMovie, if you're a Mac user, is free. Um, and there's an open source product called VSDC. There's a lot of uh, in, inexpensive and free video editing software. Um, we then actually use a thing called Rev.com, which uh, transcribes, it listens to the audio and transcribes it into English text. Okay, so it's a speech to text tool. Uh, that's $1.25 a minute. We then have a human actually watch the video, listen to the text and make corrections to it because it's never 100% right. It always makes mistakes. And you can also put in punctuation and capitalization and stuff like that. Um, your free options for that are like Apple Voice Recorder, uh, Windows or Google text, I'm uh, sorry, speech to text tools if you want to use something that's free. And then we use something called Anchor FM, which is a free tool that is for podcasting. So we actually repurpose the video that we publish on our website. Again, it's like five to 10 minutes long, but we repurpose that into podcasts. And with Anchor FM, it puts it out on Spotify and Apple and Google and all the different podcasting platforms. So if you don't want to watch it, if you want to listen to it in your car, and we try to tailor the content such that you don't have to watch it. You can just listen to it and, and, and get the Im impact of it. And it's, it's great to be able to, A, put it out in a lot of places. Of course, we put it out on our YouTube channel as well. And that's very important to do because YouTube is like a really big search engine, right? It's like the second largest or most popular search engine in the world after Google itself. And of course, they're owned by Google. So um, that's kind of how we, how we uh, those are the tools we use in the costs. And then it's just, you know, time. We have an internal a person that does the video editing work for us because it's not, it's not complicated. If, if we had to do something fancy, I would definitely call somebody like Kristen to, because she's, you know, she's got great production uh, skills that we don't have, right? Kristen, on that note. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll start by saying that <clears throat> producers are used to working um, on lots of different projects with varying budgets. I mean, it's just the nature of the game, right? So um, I, I break my budget or I, how I explain it to people is there's, there's two parts. There's your tangible pieces and then there's your intangible pieces. And the tangible budget elements are things like, um, do you need a script or are you gonna just do interview format? Um, do you have existing footage or do you need to go out and shoot new footage? How much, uh, you know, what's the production value on that footage? You need one camera, two cameras. Do you need a teleprompter? Do you need talent? Um, do you, you know, how many days do you need to shoot? Um, and then there's another component is, is your graphic element. How complex do your graphics to get? Do you need, you know, 3D animations of things or do you just need simple text graphics? Um, your 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 sound is is another variable you know music or voiceover or sound effects um you know there's just all these elements that come together which actually the the intangible piece is creating you know balancing all of those elements to get the story that you're looking for so you know pacing and messaging and um and storytelling and those are all things that you know come with experience and come with doing it for for a long time. Um, but I don't think that budget should be ever be an issue. You know, I I've I've started shooting on my iPhone. You guys have seen me at chamber events with my gimbal. You know, it's it's you know interestingly enough, people are used to seeing iPhone video now. They're used to seeing Zoom video. They're used to see you know if if you. If you can tell your story and communicate your message, I don't think, I'm finding that I don't think the client cares if it's shot on an iPhone or a $10,000 camera. So, you know, there, there are places for the really nice cameras, certainly in the really nice um, production value. If you're gonna, if it's gonna be projected, you know, at a huge event or um, I don't know, sometimes people like I, you know, the schmooze factor of, of working with a big ad agency, <laughs> but, um, I, I just think that it's all about the story and communicating the message. And that's what's really important. I've been shooting all B-roll on my iPhone for three years, four years now. I hire a crew to do my sit down interviews. So I have professional lighting and audio, but everything else I create um, has been with my iPhone. Um, so 
Yeah. So, it, you know, again, don't let budget be a, be a obstacle because there's so, and there's so many things you can do. I mean, quite frankly, over COVID, I've had a lot of clients that sent me existing footage, right? Existing stills, existing footage that they may have already had. And you can, you can uh, repurpose all of that, all those elements and all of that content into some really engaging um, video, adding graphics, music, voiceover, whatever you need to do. I mean, that was a big part of my business over COVID is that people who had been holding on to this footage that, that they've had or wanted to do this for a long time, that was the opportunity to do it because there wasn't live shooting. Thank you. Can I just piggyback off of that? Yeah, I just want to piggyback off of what Kristen just said, because it was so perfect for what I was thinking about. So for the most part, like, as long as I have been doing social media, we have used free apps because there are so many great resources out there. And we even have pretty much like a resource list of apps that we use for what specific purpose. Um, if they cost anything, it is very, very minimal um, because there's so many ways around it. But when we need a level of video that we cannot create from that between Amanda and I, or even from existing content, we have clients who have used um, KFP Media. And with that, you just get this beautiful polished product. And then Amanda and I have broken it up into so many different ways and used it. We reuse it and reuse it and reuse it in so many different um, platforms. And um, it's really great that you can have both paces. Kristen's so right that people are used to exactly what we're looking at right now as far as video. And Probably from Kristen's eye, this is like blurry and not, not looking great, but the average eye is used to this all day long and enjoys watching, especially on social media, media and YouTube um, video at this level. But it's nice that you can have the free option and it's um, user friendly and very manageable to get used to, to do on your own. And then it's also nice that we have resources, especially in our community that we can trust that are really polished products that can be used for years to come over and over again. A great point about um, repurposing content. You spend a lot of time, whether it be um, writing something or creating a post or a video, and there are so many different ways that you can repurpose it on different platforms, utilizing your email list, um, bringing it back for a throwback Thursday. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. Kristen, as you were talking, I was thinking about how many debates did you have during, well, throughout the pandemic on using B-roll with masks versus without masks? Yeah, that was, and, and then it was like, do you put a little disclaimer, you know, previous video shot before COVID and I mean, we've all looked at those little watch TV and be like, oh my God, they don't have masks on. You know, How are they so close together? So I know it's crazy. It's crazy. They're hugging the nerve. I know, um, it, I know. In terms of a, a cheap tool to use, ring lights are amazing. The lighting versus, mm -hmm. it makes such a big difference. Um, so I highly recommend. And I also, I, I'll put it in the, I have a, I've created a document how to shoot on your iPhone that I send to my clients. I can put that in the chat, I think, um, just to kind of just tips and tricks when you're shooting with your iPhone. Um, Amazing. Thank you. Oh, Rachel just showed her ring light. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Um, so I'm excited about this one and I want all of you or any, anybody who it's applicable to um, in the chat, content ideas. So let's talk about some content ideas for video. And I'm going to start with Amanda. Everything and anything can be content ideas. Um, so we struggle with this with our clients all the time because when we usually sit down with them for the very first time, they go, I, have, I don't have anything to share with the audience. I don't think that there's anything that I have that they wanna see, or I don't know where to start. I don't know what they wanna see versus what they don't wanna see. Something that Rachel says all the time, and is so true is we live in such a nosy society now people want to know the ins and outs of everything that you're doing so when it comes to our world over on social media the platforms that we use in the um the capabilities that we use like the stories the reels the igtvs just regular video content live videos 
um, people really want to see the ins and outs of your business. They want to see the ins and outs of the making of your products. They want to see the ins and outs of your day-to-day -day activities. So pretty much anything you do could be captured via video and then shared out in a different capacity. Um, it could be behind the scenes, kind of sneak peeks and looks at what you're doing. It could be you on the road meeting with clients or business partners or whatever that might look like. It could be actually developing the product itself, sitting down, doing a working session. Um, really anything that you do in your normal day to day, we encourage our clients to try to capture like little snippet pieces of that. Um, and then one thing that we're really pushing right now for our clients to be utilizing just because it's so heightened right now on social media is the reels component. And that content is a little bit different because you're, you're almost, um, recording for a very specific purpose. So there have been times where clients have been, have sent us either like B-roll, like they have Kristen, like you were saying that they've had in the past, um, that they just haven't utilized or we've gone out and taken footage and then we'll overlay music on top of that. And we've done that. Um, but there usually is like a more of like a template and a format to follow with those. Rachel, anything you want to add to that content wise? No, I think you really captured it. I think everything can be used as content. People do think like, well, my stuff isn't, um, you know, one of our clients is a carpet cleaning company. And when we first sat down with them, they were like, we just don't know what to talk about. And people are so nosy. They want to know the products that you use and how your business got started. They want to know what your day looks like and share about your machines. You know, Amanda and I got started together because my husband and I grew and scaled up our plumbing company because of Instagram. And Amanda said it perfectly. She was like, if you're making toilets look pretty and people are following it, why aren't we doing this for other people? And it's so simple. Like we have over 2000 people following what we do for a plumbing company. And like, that's the world we're in people. So <laughs> it's just nosy and they need entertainment. However, it comes to them. I don't know if we've ever had a toilet reference on a chamber in the chamber edge meeting. Thanks, Rachel. There's the first um, time for everything. Always. I, I had a quick point. Andre put a comment in that I thought was really interesting. We haven't touched on that at all, but he produces explainer videos. And I think we've all seen them. This is sort of the hand moving on the whiteboard kind of stuff uh, using graphics to, and, and it's a really powerful way to get even complicated concepts across very, very quickly. Um, so I just want to maybe give Andre a chance to, to talk about that because I, I don't know how he, does those I guess it's stop some kind of stop motion I, I'm not sure how it works but it's um it's a unique uh, use of video that we haven't talked about at all and I think it's very powerful thanks Hans <laughs> um yeah so I'm uh, most of my videos are animated um so I have a team that works with me on uh, doing the animation and um, I'll just go over real quick uh, on our process. So with our clients, it's good that they have a message that they want to tell. So if it's about their comp their business or a service that they want to talk about, um, that's where the scripting comes into play. So we typically do start with a script first. Once that's um, nailed down, then we do the storyboard. And you know when we talk about pricing, that the unless the client brings us a script, um, we our pricing goes from storyboarding, um, voiceover. If we have to do the voiceover, if we're not doing the voiceover, then we there's a small a lesser charge for us to sync the voiceover to the animation after. So the process is script, storyboard, voice voiceover, animation, and then sync everything together. And then um, one of the things that we also ask for too. Um, cause everything today is branding is to make sure that we have the company's logo because it's good to have your logo on that video. So this way, whilst they're listening or watching the video, at least there's your message or your branding right there that they can see, you know, cause they'll be listening out who's it that I'm listening to and they can look in the corner and see your branding. Um, and those videos are typically, you know, most videos that we do is anywhere between two and a half to three minutes. And it's because after typically after three minutes, you lose the attention of the viewer. 
Um, and as long as the colors are, so the other thing with animation, it can be more eye catchy because of the colors we use because it's, it's, it's somewhat cartoonish, right? So, and people like shiny objects and bright colors. So as we can capture them in that short time span, it's an easier way to um, get the message across. Thank you so much, Andre. And if you have any examples that you could put in the chat, that would be amazing. Sure, I'll, I'll do that. Awesome, thank you. And um, another use of video I was just thinking of is Dot's on the call and she um, sells wine through Scout and Cellar. And correct me if I'm wrong on any of this Dot. And she does unboxings on social media. Do you wanna talk a little bit about that Dot? Yeah, because one of the things with Scout and Cellar that I'm trying to promote is my is our wine club and my husband and I get our monthly shipment. So I just want to um, show people what comes in the box and we don't know month to month what comes in our monthly wine club. So it's kind of a, a surprise. So we decided that we do this unboxing every month when we get it. So I get a, quite a few people that are starting to watch it and look to it and gathering more customers because who doesn't like wine delivered to your house? Thank you, Dot. I like that. Who doesn't like wine delivered to your house? Amen to that. <laughs> and um, I'm, while I'm kind of picking on people, how about Henry? You want to talk a little bit about the drone videos? Because those are amazing and the reach you get on those are incredible. Thank you. Uh, so drone videos are like a whole nother animal because uh, there's so many variables like um, getting like airspace permission and making sure you can fly there and also making sure you're not actually flying into a power line or something of that nature. But um, one of the services I offer is uh, drone photography and video where I usually meet with the client and figure out where they want to fly. And then I do research on my end to make sure we can safely and legally fly there because uh, drone footage kind of adds a whole nother layer to videos and like people want it people love seeing it and they want it's very engaging and kind of like seeing like uh, like an area for example like if you have a new headquarters or office or a city or a town you're supporting it's great to show where you're based in like i next spring i have one that should be quite interesting this landscaping company wants me to fly a drone out of their office window and show the downtown of andover <laughs> Very cool. But, but I, I love the one that you did of the smokestack and Lowell. Oh. Thank you. That was quite a cold night. <laughs> it took so a it few the, tries. The, Chris, the, the Christmas tree. Everybody knows the big kind of smokestack Christmas tree in Lowell. That was, it's just um, such like a warm and fuzzy feeling for everybody, I think, in the area to see that tree. So that was a really awesome video. Thank you. Appreciate that. Well, thank you for everybody for letting me pick on you a little bit. I appreciate that. And thank you for starting the trend, Hans. <laughs> um, so a tip for someone looking to incorporate video into their marketing strategy. And again, if you have a tip and you're not a panelist, feel, please feel free to put it in the chat. Um, so Kristen, do you have any tips for someone looking to incorporate video into their strategy? Yeah, I just want to go back a little bit. Um, and, and one of the things that I... Um, think is really a, an excellent content idea as a testimonial. Um, I think testimonials give so much credibility. That's kind of what I love to do. I Rather than scripting, I tend to interview um, customers of my clients and uh, users, people that have, that have had their problem solved with products or services that my clients provide, and to really um, capture that credibility and that authenticity is, I, I don't think you can beat that in terms of uh, content. Um, so that is something that I, uh, I think is really important. I mean, I, I think, I, I remember years ago, I did a video series for an orthodontist and I, and he's like, I want to interview 20 of my clients. And I'm thinking, seriously, like how many different things can 20 people say about this orthodontist. And honestly, there were 20 different unique testimonials about this orthodontist. And, and it, and it got me thinking, um, you know, nobody knows what a personal experience is with a product or a service, right? Until you hear it. So I tend to, a lot of times my videos 
end up centering around something that nobody could have even thought of before you come up with that um, actual authentic answer as to why someone uses your product or service. So I think that customer focus is so, so important. And that's something that um, I really focus on. Um, in terms of including it in your strategy, I also think that that the video should have a purpose instead of just for video's sake, right? Like you can do some whiz bang, high graphics, you know, and, uh, you know, great music or whatever, but if it doesn't serve a purpose, as Rachel was saying, I think before, there's so much noise out there. You don't want to add to the noise. You want to help, you know, break through that noise with something of value. So um, in terms of adding a, a component to your marketing strategy, really think about how you can educate your audience on your industry or something that you do, which then will bring credibility to you as a, a leader in that industry. So that's kind of my main thing, add value. And what if somebody is like a one or two man or woman show and they are petrified of being on video? Well, I think that's where the interview comes in, right? Because I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had a client say, no, 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 I, I've got this, I've got this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just talk to camera and I'm gonna give my script. And I was like, all right. And they don't, they, they freeze as soon as that camera goes on. So what I tend to do is if I sit down and uh, within an interview with that person and um, have a conversation and it's just, we're just flowing and there's back and forth. And then that's where you get the really natural, authentic, um, you know, delivery of content. And <laughs> I mean, it is, it is funny over the years that people I've, you know, oh, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. But then it's so, it's such a stilted delivery. I oftentimes will be able to talk people into an interview because it becomes much less stilted and way more authentic. So, and then I think it helps the presenter too, a lot. Thanks, Kristen. Um, Hans, a tip for someone looking to incorporate video into their marketing strategy. And then if you have um, any insight on for somebody who is petrified of getting in front of the camera. Yeah, so I'll start with the second one first. So that's basically why we do, uh, it's always me and Devin doing interviews. I'm either interviewing him. We don't script this, by the way. There's no scripting. We kind of sit down and talk, okay, what are we going to talk about today? We spend a couple of minutes. So I'm going to ask you this, this, and this, so he knows in his mind what we're going to do. But we don't script it because we want to keep it very authentic and natural. That's just the way we want to do it. Now, you can script it. It's going to be a lot more professional, right, if you, if you do that. Um, so I think having two people in front of the camera um, is, is a great way to do that. I'm sorry, what was the other question, Danielle? Uh, a tip for someone looking to incorporate video into their marketing strategy. Yeah, if, if, if you do nothing else, again, I, YouTube is a huge, I, I mean, I love YouTube because I fix things, right? And um, it's a great place. People have just, YouTube is this, this encyclopedia of information on how to do stuff. And you know how to do stuff that nobody else knows how to do, whether it's maybe the way you fix chili or, you know, the way you uh, check the tire pressure on your car, whatever it is, right? There's just, you can share some of that wisdom and insight and, um, and, and, and create a brand for yourself. And YouTube's really easy. I mean, it's the easiest thing that even I can do it. So, you know, and I'm an old guy, so you can figure it out too. But you fix things. So it sounds like you can do a lot of things. <laughs> just trying to give you some credit. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel and Amanda, a tip for somebody looking to incorporate video into their marketing strategy. And then what do you do if somebody does not want to get in front of the camera and do an Instagram reel? Um, okay. So the best thing you can do is to take action. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be polished. It's not going to be a high level video series, but it's going to be you. And you're going to do that until you know better and you can do better. Um, so my, our first course of action is to always just start, just pick up your own cell phone, record a video, put it up, talk about your product, talk about, talk about your business, make it so simple. Um, and we are always posting about topics that you should talk about. If people think they don't have anything to share, you always have something to share. Um, so I would say the first thing you could do is just start to do it. Um, and then get better at the craft as it goes along. And then if people don't wanna be in front of the camera, 
especially for reels, there are endless options. And Danielle is doing a phenomenal job of showcasing local businesses. And it's just panning the room and putting music to it to show different um, businesses in, in each of the communities. Um, you don't have to. And honestly, there has to be a nice balance between the business owner being in front of the camera and then showing what you actually sell or provide and that being in front of the camera. Um, so if you, if you are camera shy, that is completely fine. Put your product in front of the camera and talk. Simple. Amanda? Um, I think Rachel did a great job in, in communicating what we say to our clients, but we also like to say like there is a draft feature, which is really great for reels. Um, so if you're not 100% comfortable with posting it, but you want to just get in the habit of being able to create it, edit it, um, and just play with the features so that you fully understand how to do it before you actually go live with your first one, we really encourage a lot of people to, to start off doing that too, because it builds confidence on the back end. So that way, when you do do your first one and you know that it's gonna go up on your platforms and everyone is going to see it, you feel a little bit more reassured that what you've done um, is correct and also is going to look you know, aesthetically pleasing on the other side. But we definitely say, do it before you're ready or you're never gonna do it at all. Um, and the more people do them, they find that they really like them. As we've been working with clients for so long, when they first started, they were like, there's no way I'm doing that. And now we can't stop them from making them. So it is fun. And it's a, yeah, Danielle's one of them. Um, I mean, I, I was okay is, with doing it, but I had no idea how to do it. And then a monster was yeah. created. Yeah. And once you, yeah, now they're so easy. They're just easy to create and it's fun. And once you see a new trend and you're like, oh, I could make that, you know, really work for my product or for my business. Um, it, it kind of like, you can't help but keep creating more content. And that's exactly what I was going to um, kind of touch upon is if you see accounts of other businesses or organizations or individuals and you love what they're doing, take what they're doing and make it your own, you know, get, grab inspiration from other, you know, posts and videos and accounts that people are using and make it your own. And sometimes like um, I sang a video to the tune of Frozen without any background music and stuck my head out of a window on Merrimack Street. And when I was ready to post that video, I was like, do I wanna do this? And I remember posting it and like just walking away and being like, I can't believe I just did that. Like sometimes it is gonna feel a little like, like you're um, putting yourself out there and very vulnerable, but it, it helps you grow. And it's just another way to just kind of have fun with things. I'm going to pick on Peter now. He talked about using video and prospecting via Vineyard or Loom in sending personal video to prospect clients. So I just wanted Peter to kind of touch upon that because that's an interesting concept. Sure, sure. Um, so one of the things that, that really helps like in the sales aspect is instead of sending out, you know, emails and it's all text-based, uh, the Vidyar platform in Loom and there's, there are some others allow you to create really personalized videos for that person that you're sending that email to. And it puts it a little animated, uh, you can either have a static image or an animated GIF that's like click here. And usually use a whiteboard or your phone. There's apps that will put the, the person's name like, hi, Danielle. So you know that that video is personalized um, for you. And then they can you know showcase whatever you're presenting in that. And it's definitely way more personal than that static email that you're sending. It also could be used for clients if you're trying to explain something that's more complicated, like a report that you're issuing clients or uh, potentially like a legal document. You can have a bubble with your head and you're explaining the document so they're seeing the document and they're seeing you. And one of the other aspects with these platforms is they have call to actions at the end. So you can have book a meeting with me if it's a, you know prospecting. Um, and uh, for you, you get analytics. How long did they watch that video? Where do they drop off? Um, so you can improve on the you know, next videos that you're sending out. That's really interesting. Thank you for that. And also thank you for mentioning um, TikTok in the chat because we haven't really touched upon TikTok. I have not embarked on TikTok. I feel like that, that would like be another monster that could be created. <laughs> um, Rachel and Amanda, have you heard, like, do you have anything to add about TikTok? I know that Instagram's kind of your sweet spot. 
Yeah, we we don't use TikTok with our uh, clients only because majority of the clients that we're working with, their audience really isn't over there. Um, you know, it's a much younger demographic. Um, the, just the, the, the variety of videos that are over there are not really geared towards business. If, you know, more Instagram reels are doing that and um, IGTVs and lives over on Instagram and Facebook are doing more of that. So as of right now, it, it hasn't seemed to be valuable for us and our clients to be spending time right there as it evolves maybe down the road. But for right now, I think it's still a very young platform and I don't think it has as much capabilities as say, um, Facebook and Instagram do because there's shopping capabilities now that you can do. There's shopping links that you can do right on Instagram, which is really beneficial for a lot of our clients. So uh, until I think it grows a little bit more roots and, and shows a little bit more value for actual businesses, I don't think we'll be spending any time over there right now. I just read to that um, Instagram. I mean, that, yeah, Instagram. Sorry, there's so many social media sites that are like bubbling in my head. Um, Instagram is not going to allow you to upload any videos that have the TikTok watermark anymore. So I know I had noticed that a lot of people were creating their content on TikTok and I'm sure it's the same vice versa and, and uploading it to yeah. Instagram that that's not going to be kosher anymore. Um, Brian, I, think we're just, well, I would just want to say one thing about social video and social and I, Amanda and Rachel know this, but um, something that I've learned is that you should always upload a native link to to um, LinkedIn, especially I know that's for a fact. So for example, if you have if your video resides on YouTube or Vimeo, don't just post the link, download it mm -hmm. and upload the original file because that's going to get you more traction and more uh, the algorithms like that native video much better. So that's uh, and the other thing is with social <clears throat> and especially in LinkedIn, um, so a lot of times people are just scrolling and they're not hearing, right? They're not listening to the, the audio. So make sure you have titles that you're at the beginning to grab that person in or even this, the captions the whole time because someone may not um, be watching with their audio on. I always, I do that for tra a lot of trade shows or events, marketing, things like that too. If you're in a big noisy room, space and uh, you're creating a video, that's not the place for testimonials because you know, no one's going to hear it, right? You want to have um, graphics so that people can read it as they're walking by. Yeah, that's a really, really great point. Even on, on Facebook, they don't, they do not want you sharing YouTube links. Facebook and YouTube do not like each other. They are not friends. Um, so you definitely want to upload your video directly to the site. So Danielle, can I very, double down on it? Can I double down sure, on it for or something too? Because what you just said was so important. Um, like stuff, I've read stats. I mean, there are stats and everything, right? But like some like 60 to 80% of videos are actually first engaged with, with the sound off. Um, so captions are super, super important. I think you do a great job because your Instagram videos are all like, you know, those captions, this thing. So I don't even, you know, need the audio to, to see what you're trying to say about like, you know, engaging with the chamber. The other thing I haven't heard mentioned, I just want to throw out there is accessibility. Um, you know, I call it basically optimization as well. So, uh, your video descriptions and how you use them also are key to getting found. So if you're if you have content that is relevant, um, you know, not just putting it out there on social, but putting it on your website, having those descriptions on that page. Like we do a podcast, I video the podcast, I put the transcript on the page because it helps me with my SEO strategy so that I'm gonna get found. So that video might have a longer shelf life because it's on the website it has a, a content that's relevant maybe like a year from now that content's even more relevant because of something in the new cycle or you get found. so i think you know when i look at this i look at curation creation distribution optimization um and i think the optimization piece is something that is so important so what kristen just said it is is everything to me, right it's like you can you can have a really polished video you can have a video that takes you know 10 minutes to kind of pull together but it's about you know engaging your audience and getting those views and i think that's one thing that a lot of people overlook awesome thank you such great points and it's true i think sometimes people feel like okay i did the video awesome and then they're done but you you put all the time and effort into doing it so what are the steps you can take to make sure that as many people as possible are viewing that and in that it's resonating with your ideal audience so thank you um we could i feel like we could talk about video for like five more hours and um, we only have two minutes left Brian did ask something in the chat I think um, you know if people want to answer quickly 
but do you guys do your video editing outside of the social media apps and then upload it? Or do you find it better to use in-app editing for Facebook and Instagram? I know I do all of my um, editing on Instagram within Instagram. I don't know if anybody has anything they want to add to that. I think it depends on what you're creating. So um, if you are creating a reel, for example, you do, um, it makes more sense to edit it inside of the app, but you don't necessarily have to. You could always download it and then re-upload uh, with the audio that you wanted, but it is much easier to just do it right in the app. Um, but it really just depends on what you're creating. So if you're just putting a regular video up, on an IGTV, we usually do that in another app on the back end and we make it look polished and then we put it up. <clears throat> so it really just depends. And then the stories, um, same thing. You could edit them in a different app and then um, upload them in, whether it might be filters or shortening them or lengthening them or audio, um, things along those lines. So it, it all depends what's easier um, and what's quicker for you. So whatever you're going to be doing on the go, whatever's going to make your life easier, if it's easier, just do it in the app then we, we always tell our clients it's better to be done um, than, you know, perfect, so. Awesome, thank you. Um, so it's 9.29, if you can already believe that. I had two more questions, so I'm just gonna ask people kind of rapid fire. If you can put um, your answers to these in the chat, panelists and attendees, I'm going to um, download the video and the chat and I will email it out to everybody that registered. Um, so if you could put an, a favorite app or tool and then any fun video trends at the moment that you're watching, participating in, um, if you can put that in the chat. And then I just really want to thank all of you for taking the time for being here, our amazing panel. I mean, I, I don't know about everybody here, but I know that I got a ton out of this. This was such a great, um, relevant topic. So let's give everybody a Zoom um, round of applause, please. And if anybody has anything to add, feel free to kind of unmute and hop in now. And if not, then we will send this out ASAP. Just wondering you, if uh, Virginia would like to introduce next month's topic. Virginia, say something about what we're doing second Tuesday of February. I'm sure I had to think for a minute <laughs> 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 to get my talk straight. Um, for the second Tuesday of February, uh, we're going to have a discussion about um, creating a results-based culture. So I think it'll be a great discussion, whether you're a one-person company or in a larger organization. Um, I can, I'll provide some structure for it, and uh, we'll also just share with the group. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. I just want to say that Daniela started a trend where she has coffee all the time in her reels, and I really feel that she should start a trend where she has margaritas all the time, just being <laughs> from a Mexican restaurant. I think that that's really important to support our brand. She's always drinking coffee around Lola, and there's not enough margaritas in her reels. So I just you know what we could we could do um well i'm currently doing dry january so it would have to be for february but what we could do is have me like always like just run in and take a sip and then run out and be like i'm always on the go stop at el potro we could have some fun with this i'm totally game danielle's my spirit I, animal i can volunteer for this i'll help you danielle <laughs> maybe people could like come in and like just meet me you know we could like just yeah i'm game sounds good to me that'd be fun <laughs> I think we have some takers. Maybe we need a margarita crawl, but only oh, at El yeah. Potro. So I guess like we can go from table to table. Speed margarita networking. Networking. Yeah, I like, I like it. We'll have different margaritas at every table. You know, that sounds good. So, there you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all so much. It was so nice to see you all hopefully in person soon, but this is the next best thing. So thank you all. And uh, we'll see you soon. The Coalition for a Better Acre invests in communities, developing stable neighborhoods and building futures. Since day one, Enterprise Bank has been CBA's leading local funder because Enterprise understands commercial lending, how to streamline the process and make it easy, serving as a trusted advisor and partner. Whatever your idea of success, Enterprise can help get you there. Enterprise Bank. Create real success. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender.